Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor Jim Pytel and today's topic of discussion is synchronous condensers. Our objective is to examine how varying the field current of a mechanically unloaded, electrically excited synchronous motor can power factor correct a larger three-phase AC system. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewers watch the power factor correction and the electrically excited synchronous motors lecture, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please bring yourself up to speed and return when you are so qualified. In the aforementioned power factor correction lecture, we examine how the reactive power of an electrical load can be balanced with a power factor correction element that supplies an equal amount of reactive power yet of opposite polarity. In a perfectly power factor corrected system, the load element and power factor correction element cyclically exchange reactive power at the point of use such that supply voltage and source current are perfectly in phase with one another and source current reaches a minimum value. In ordinary circumstances, industrial loads like motors are inductive in nature and power factor correction elements take the form of capacitors placed in parallel. Given a known load condition, one can calculate a specific capacitor value that perfectly power factor corrects this exact scenario. Given a fixed, predictable, and dependable electrical load, there would be absolutely nothing wrong with this approach. The problem is, electrical loads aren't static and often fluctuate throughout the day, sometimes wildly, with no discernible pattern. One method of power factor correcting a fluctuating electrical load is to assemble a bank of capacitors with varying capacitance values that can be switched in or out such that the combined capacitance meets the reactive power requirements of the electrical load at that particular moment. This is also a workable solution, however it can be complicated to implement, and unless the bank of capacitors is very large and includes a wide range of values, step to nature, overcorrecting in certain scenarios and undercorrecting in others. A far more accurate and responsive method of live power factor correcting an electrical load is with a synchronous condenser, the topic of today's discussion. A synchronous condenser is a mechanically unloaded three-phase AC electrically excited synchronous motor placed in parallel to the three-phase AC network that requires power factor correction. By varying the field current to the free-spinning synchronous motor, one can find a sweet spot where the reactive power of the synchronous condenser is equal in magnitude yet of opposite polarity as the reactive power needs of a load. For the purposes of today's lecture, we'll be making use of a pretty rugged but admittedly inefficient quarter horsepower rated electrically excited synchronous motor designed to operate with 120 volts line to neutral, 208 volts line to line, light industrial three phase AC and Y configuration. You recall this is the same motor we used in the electrically excited synchronous motor lecture. In the aforementioned lecture, we learned that a graph of reactive power as a function of field current for an electrically excited synchronous motor looks something like this. At low levels of rotor excitation, the synchronous motor draws positive reactive power and appears as an inductive load where current lags voltage. If field current increases, it draws less reactive power and the phase shift between voltage and current decreases. If field current is further decreased, the synchronous motor switches roles and instead supplies negative reactive power and appears as a capacitive load where current leads voltage. We also learned an electrically excited synchronous motor in a given load condition Field current can be so managed such that the synchronous motor neither draws nor supplies reactive power and voltage and current are perfectly in phase with one another. This would be an occasion of unity power factor. A synchronous condenser is really an extension of these same scenarios, the one difference being the motor is mechanically uncoupled and free spinning. And since the motor is not doing any mechanical work, any excess reactive power it draws or supplies in this floating state can be put to work power factor correcting a larger three phase AC system. By adjusting the magnitude of field current such that the reactive power supplied by the synchronous condenser perfectly counteracts that drawn by the load, reactive power will bounce back and forth at the point of use and the source will stay out of it. Let's see if this is the case. First, we need to determine this particular device's upper and lower ranges of reactive power. At a minimum field excitation current of 450 milliampers DC, looks like the synchronous condenser draws 330 milliampers of line current per phase, lagging by around 60 degrees and consumes roughly 15 watts of real power to overcome friction and posit 25 bars of reactive power. In this underexcited state, each winding appears to be inductive in nature. In a best case scenario, this is the most positive reactive power each winding would be capable of consuming. On the other end, at a maximum field excitation current of 710 milliampers DC, looks like the synchronous condenser draws 300 milliampers of line current per phase, leading by around 45-ish degrees consumes roughly 15 watts of real power to overcome friction and supplies roughly negative 15 vars. In this overexcited state, each winding appears to be capacitive in nature. In a best case scenario, this is the most negative reactive power each winding would be capable of supplying. 
When we dial field excitation current back down to 590 milliampers DC, looks like the synchronous condenser draws 250 milliampers line current per phase, perfectly in phase with supply voltage, and neither draws nor supplies reactive power. In this scenario, each winding consumes only 15 watts of real power to overcome friction and zero vars of reactive power. This confirms the theoretical plots of reactive power as a function of field current and line current as a function of field current we observe for electrically excited synchronous motors. The only difference being the synchronous condenser is a mechanically unloaded synchronous motor. At low levels of field excitation, the synchronous condenser consumes positive reactive power. At high levels of field excitation, the synchronous condenser supplies negative reactive power. Additionally, we found a balance point in there where the synchronous condenser neither draws nor supplies reactive power, and not only is current in phase with the voltage, but also achieves a minimum magnitude. Long story short, looks like our upper and lower ranges for this particular device are positive 25 VARs at a minimum of 450 milliampers DC field current, and a minimum of negative 15 VARs per phase at 710 milliampers DC field current. As long as the load in question that we wish to power factor correct is inside these upper and lower bounds per phase, we should be able to power factor correct this system. Let's examine a couple load scenarios and see if this is the case. Before we do so, I will caution you to dial back your expectations. You know in all scenarios, minimum, maximum, and middle, the synchronous condenser always consumes 15 watts of real power per phase accounting for friction. This is going to cause some problems because these example scenarios will seem pretty inefficient because source current, the summation of load current and synchronous condenser current in the power factor corrected scenario would actually be larger than the non-power factor corrected scenario. This is not ideal. This is however a limitation that can't be overlooked. However, we will be capable of demonstrating that the synchronous condenser can at least meet the reactive needs of a particular load. A more realistic industrial scenario might be a collection of loads that draw substantially more real power such as the small amount of real power consumed by the unloaded and freely spitting synchronous condenser would be negligible. Really, all I'm trying to show in this brief demonstration is that by bearing field excitation current, we can match the reactive power requirements of a varying electrical load. Lastly, keep in mind, this is three-phase AC power factor correction. Given a balanced condition, everything that happens in phase one also happens in phase two and phase three, only phase shifted by a relative 120 degrees. By concentrating on what happens in a single phase, it keeps me from repeating myself. Our first load scenario is a balanced Y configuration of a slightly inductive impedance. In a non-power factor corrected scenario, each phase appears to draw 100 milliampers of current, where current lags each phase voltage by a relative 74 degrees. Each load appears to be consuming roughly 3.5 watts of real power and positive 12 bars of reactive power. This is well inside the correct range of this particular device. I would suspect we need to slightly overexcite the rotor to supply an equivalent amount of negative reactive power. When we bring the synchronous condenser in parallel to the load, each load continues to consume the same amount of positive 12 hours of reactive power as previously. When we increase field current to approximately 680 milliampers DC and slightly overexcite the rotor, each winding of the synchronous condenser consumes roughly 15 watts of real power accounting for friction, yet supplies roughly negative 12 hours of reactive power. Equal in magnitude, you'd have opposite polarity to the load. Given current to the load lags and current to the synchronous condenser leads, source current, the summation of load and synchronous condenser current, appears in phase with supply voltage. The equal and opposite amounts of reactive power drawn by the load and supplied by the synchronous condenser cancel each other out, such that each phase is under the impression that it needs to only supply 3.5 watts of real power to the load and 15 watts of real power to the synchronous condenser for a total of 18.5 watts. Any amount of reactive power is exchanged between the load and the synchronous condenser at the point of use, and the source stays out of it. If this is a fixed scenario, we could determine a specific capacitor that would power factor correct the system. Problem is, systems aren't fixed, and sometimes loads change. Case in point, consider another load scenario where load impedance drops, current rises, and becomes more inductive in nature. In the non-power factor corrected scenario, each phase appears to draw roughly 185 milliampers of current lagging each phase by a relative 66 degrees. Each load appears to be consuming 9 watts of real power and positive 20 vars of reactive power. This is 5 vars beyond the amount of negative reactive power the synchronous condenser is capable of supplying, so even if we max out field excitation current, we'll most likely fall 5 vars short. It's still worth a shot. When we bring the synchronous condenser in parallel to the load, each load continues to draw the same amount of current and consumes the same amount of real and reactive power as previously. 
when we max out rotor field current at 710 milliampers DC and further over excite the rotor, each winding of the synchronous condenser consumes roughly 15 watts of real power accounted for friction, yet now supplies an increased negative 15 vars of reactive power of opposite polarity as the load, yet just shy of meeting the magnitude. It's still better than nothing. The positive 20 vars of reactive power drawn by the load and the negative 15 vars of reactive power supplied by the synchronous condenser only partially cancel each other out, such that each phase is under the impression it needs to supply 9 watts of real power to the load and 15 watts of real power to the synchronous condenser, or 24 watts, and positive 20 minus 15, or 5 vars of reactive power. A majority of reactive power is cyclically exchanged between the load and the synchronous condenser at the point of use, and the source only needs to supply the missing 5 vars per phase. Source current, the summation of load and synchronous condenser current, appears now to only slightly lag supply voltage, not nearly as much as the non-power factor corrected scenario. But wait, that's not all. In addition to synchronous condensers with overexcited rotors acting like capacitors and supplying negative reactive power, synchronous condensers with underexcited rotors can act like inductors and consume positive reactive power. This is the rarely exploited left half of the reactive power as a function of field current plot. Very rarely are you going to have to power factor correct capacitive load since most industrial loads are inductive motors, but it does happen. Case in point, consider a scenario consisting of a balanced Y configuration of a slightly capacitive impedances. In a non-power factor corrected scenario, each phase appears to draw 100 mA of current leading each phase by a relative 81 degrees. Each load appears to be consuming 2 watts of real power and negative 12 vars of reactive power. This is well inside the correction range of this particular device. I would suspect we need to slightly underexcite the rotor to consume an equivalent amount of positive reactive power. When we bring the synchronous condenser in parallel to the load, each load continues to draw the same amount of current and consume the same amount of real and supplies the same negative 12 bars of reactive power per phase as previously. When we decrease field current to approximately 540 milliampers DC and underexcite the rotor, each winding of the synchronous condenser consumes roughly 15 watts of real power accounting for friction, but in this underexcited state, consumes positive 15 bars of reactive power. Equal in magnitude, you'd have opposite polarity to the load. Given current to the load leads and current to the synchronous condenser lags, source current, the summation of load and synchronous condenser current, appears in phase with supply voltage. The equal and opposite amounts of reactive power supplied by the load and consumed by the synchronous condenser cancel each other out such that each phase is under the impression it only needs to supply 2 watts of real power to the load and 15 watts of real power to the synchronous condenser for a total of 17 watts. Any amount of reactive power is cyclically exchanged between the load and the synchronous condenser at the point of use, and the source stays out of it. Alright, that's about it. Remember this take home point. If a three phase AC system is inductive in nature, the power factor correction device must be capacitive in nature, and one needs to overexcite the rotor such that the synchronous condenser supplies negative reactive power. In contrast, if a three phase AC system is capacitive in nature, the power factor correction device must be inductive in nature, and one needs to underexcite the rotor such that the synchronous condenser consumes positive reactive power. In an ideal scenario, one should be able to manage field current such that the synchronous condenser is of equal magnitude yet of opposite polarity to the load. You will note during the course of this quick demonstration, I perform manual adjustment of the field current to meet the needs of a particular electrical load at any given time. A more sophisticated power factor correction application, making use of a synchronous condenser, would monitor phase shift or reactive power consumption in real time, then automatically step up or step down excitation current to bring source current back in phase with supply voltage. We'll examine closed loop control systems enabling this automated means of power factor correction in later lectures. Until then, that's all I've got for you today. In conclusion, we examine the synchronous condenser. We learned that underexcitation causes the synchronous condenser to consume positive reactive power as would an inductor, and overexcitation causes the synchronous condenser to supply negative reactive power as would a capacitor. By managing field current, a synchronous condenser can power factor correct a larger three-phase AC system. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. And be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.